Can somebody that has absolutely no experience in game development make a game? Let's find out. Hey everybody, welcome. My name is Gerald and I am the Ruling Spear. I'm currently on a journey where I want to learn every aspect of game development and I have zero experience in the whole game development field. Um, I will need to learn everything from coding, 3D modeling, artwork, music, game design, and even the marketing stuff. So this channel is purely a documentation of that journey. I'm currently about a year into the journey where I started learning C Sharp and learning Unity. The story about how I got to Unity is a long one which I'll save for another day. But it's one of those that's just readily available. It's got a lot of um, resources and a community built behind it. And I figured, why not? Let's just start somewhere, right? Because that was the biggest thing for me, is just to actually pick something up and just get it going. So at the moment, I'm about a year into this journey and I'm currently working on a project called Crystal Void. It's a 3D game. Yes, why do I choose a 3D game to be my first game? I don't know, because I'm a moron. But I had a few projects that I started before that, but I've placed them on ice due to other complexity, or I just didn't really have a clear goal for it. I initially started with a game called Flickertron, which is a game based on an old South African board game called Fingerboard. And I think there are similar games across the world called Karim, if I pronounce that correctly. Please help me. But I eventually realized that this game has got a high complexity when it comes to physics. So I shelved that one. It looked fantastic. And I started to love where I was going with this, but I decided to just shelve it to the side until I've learned quite a bit more because it can get complex very quickly. The second one I made was actually a short little game I made for my daughter. While she was looking at me on my screen, seeing that I'm busy making games, she decided she's going to design a game and I have to make it. So she drew this little picture on a pink drawing board, dry eraser board. And, um, and she told me exactly what needed to happen. She, this is the main character. His name is Fricky, which if you're a South African, you know it's quite a interesting name but then this fricky has got a little pet and he needs to collect these stars and only when he collects the stars can he actually go out so i decided okay wish granted i will make you this game and funny enough i made this a small little mobile game and she absolutely loved it and wherever we get to some family or friends she always asks me to rip out the phone she wants to show them her game yes the first game that ruling spear games developed was made by a five-year-old but that aside it's only a small single level game but the idea was there and it was fun to create it and that really just amped me up to get feedback from other people how they loved it and it's a great idea even on on twitter i shared some of the stuff and got great feedback so i immediately decided to just continue so I eventually got a bunch of courses on Udemy and also on GameDev.tv. Those have been some fantastic courses and I started learning the, the 2D course, completed that. They are absolutely brilliant at just explaining stuff and the examples that you build with them just makes it really concrete in your mind to what you need to do. And that's the basis of where I am currently at this very stage. I then decided to take another old South African favorite and try and turn it into a game. There was an old television series in the 80s called Die Swart Cut. Which translated means The Black Cat. It doesn't sound as cool, but believe me it is. It's a story about a vigilante kid that goes out and catches crooks, um, or at least causes the police to catch the crooks and he would kind of leave a little calling card behind to say that the black cat was here and meanwhile the kid's father was a police officer himself and he would usually go and catch the guys and he would never know that it is his kid that to me as a child was absolutely fantastic because 
we always we always had this vision of this kid is doing something to better his community and he can actually have an have an impact on on his on his area and i think we need more heroes like that these days to tell kids that they actually have an impact they can actually do stuff besides going out in your yellow boxer shorts and driving your bike to catch crooks I don't think that's safe these days anyway. So I dived straight into 3D modeling and that was quite an interesting learning curve, learning Blender. But I eventually got there. I got a character up and running, although some of the uh, stuff didn't work as great. It's like, what? What? I didn't have a clear idea of where I wanted to go with the game. I didn't know what you were going to do. I didn't even know if I wanted to make it a kind of a 2D platformer thing or a full on 3D game, um, I, was, I was lost in the idea. So I've placed that one on ice again. And then um, while I was trying to figure out what I actually wanted to work on, my brothers and I, we decided to, to do a game together. So we're like, yeah, guys, come on, let's make a game together. And um, also none of them had any experience in game development. We eventually found an asset, asset pack in the Unity Asset Store and um and it looked like a fantastic rpg world and we said now why don't we just build something like this use this to build off of and we can always just change it out later to whatever assets we need stuff that we made ourselves and that got the ball rolling but then work life studies everything got in the way and they weren't able to do so anymore I decided let me just continue with this project i loved it i loved the idea i had concrete ideas where i wanted to go so i had a whole trailer board set up already with everything ready to go and i decided i'm going to stick to this project and just finish it and this is the birth of crystal void so crystal void is essentially about an alien civilization of little robots not transformers but cute little robots they are living in a world where their energy is being depleted they don't have energy anymore so the only hope they have is to travel through this void or black hole as such and hope they reach a world where there is energy to harvest they have some form of a home base that goes with them that's going to allow them to get back to home if they gain enough energy but as they land on this planet and try and harvest energy some of the other civilizations or their enemies are also arriving there and this is where the game starts and this is where you need to either defend your little home base or just go and destroy the others so you can mine all the crystals yourself at the center of the map there is a massive crystal and that generates a lot of energy that they can harvest but the negative thing is everybody is going to be around it so you're either going to stand there and share that energy or you're gonna start destroying each other to gain it. And this is where it gets interesting because you can either decide to go under the radar and, and mine the smaller nodes, that's gonna give you a little bit less energy, but be safer or start attacking each other around the main crystal. Um, and this is where the game gets interesting because we can add a lot of aspects to it. And I've got a whole lot of ideas which I will share to you in due course. So at the moment, I'm currently working on getting the AI players to do everything that the player can. So there are towers, there are creeps that you can send out, and I've got a whole plethora of ideas that I want to implement into the game. But as soon as the AI is ready with those other things, I can slowly implement them at the same time. And I will get to all those juicy details. So subscribe and we will definitely get to it. So the second reason for my channel is to inspire others. There are so many people in our country, especially the youth, that have so many great ideas and talents that we should encourage them to just do something. I have a few tricks up my sleeve that I want to introduce as well when it comes to equipment, uh, because not everybody has a massive computer at home. And matter of fact, you don't even need a massive computer to create games. So come with me on this journey. We would love to hear from you. We would love some feedback. I always appreciate any feedback and let's chat let's do some things keep making games and remember if you can't do it until you can cheers guys